Castle Crashers sold over 110,000 copies in just three days. But how did the game go from a sensation to barely even talked about nowadays? If you had an Xbox 360 in 2008, there's a very good chance that you played Castle Crashers. It's a side-scrolling hack-and-slash game which was released on the Xbox Live Arcade for just $4, and it constantly went on sale, making the game cheap and affordable for anyone with an Xbox 360. The premise of the game was to choose one of four knights, and the primary strat was to simply button mash. The harder you could button mash, the easier it was to play through the game and defeat the enemies. The aim of the game was to go through the 11 chapters of the campaign and level up characters as you do. In today's world, that seems pretty simple, but back then, that was the premise of most games. Each chapter had 36 levels in them, giving the players tons of content right from the start, and the simple mechanics made the game fun for everybody. The game grew over 100,000 sales in just three days and was gaining traction very quickly. The game also had a co-op multiplayer option, allowing it to be played with friends, and this got even more people to buy the game. It was released on every major gaming platform at the time, namely the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC, reaching a market of hundreds of thousands of people. This was also at a time when consoles were starting to take off and sales were at all-time highs, which boosted the growth of Castle Crashers exponentially. Tons of people loved the game because of how easy it was and how little complications were added. This just made the game even more appealing to an even larger audience. Whether that be kids, adults, teens, everyone was playing it, and the game shaped generations of gamers. The game was also an up-and-coming indie game, so the novelty and amateur mechanics made it feel more authentic and genuine, rather than it being like a fully polished game. It had these more rustic aspects to it that just made it feel more enjoyable. And there was the proof that the game was fun, with it getting an average rating of 9 out of 10 on GameSpot, IGN, and other reviewers. While the game absolutely peaked on launch, the hype didn't die out for a long time. This is honestly pretty impressive, considering the fall of games such as Among Us, Fall Guys, and other games which can be described as one-hit wonders. At the time, Castle Crashers seemed like it was there to stay. But was it really? The simplicity of the game made it fun, along with its massive campaign and leveling system, but the game never had any updates or refreshes. There wasn't really any new things to do other than level up all the characters. If you had finished the game, well, that was it. There wasn't anything else to do other than just play with your friends. This was the major downside to Castle Crashers. The game was so fun and simple, but to the point where players would just binge it and finish it, and then there just was nothing left to do. The issue wouldn't be a problem for a while though, as the game needed 37 hours of gameplay to attain 100% completion, and new DLCs were released occasionally, giving the player more to do. So people did stay playing and talking about it for a good while. But as time grew on, updates were simply just patches and no new content was introduced. Nothing new would come from the dev team and even after the release of the next generation of consoles, the community would hear nothing until June of 2015. They announced that a remastered version of the game would be coming, but it would only be reaching Xbox and PC and not PS4 due to the size of their team. The remaster would introduce changes such as smoother multiplayer experiences, uncapped frame rates, and higher quality textures. While fans were happy with this remaster, it didn't have the same hype that the initial release of the game had. But the question is why? The game was still the same, I mean there was even more to do and it was more refined, so why was it failing to capture attention? The short answer is really that it just didn't hit the same anymore. The game was perfect in its own time, giving countless players memories of a lifetime, but the game's remaster was aimed more for the previous players and not the new ones. This made it so sales were lower, and even though it was intended for previous players, there was no real reason for them to buy the game. The only thing they could really do is just redo the game in a more refined format. The truth is, the players would only want to play the game for nostalgia, which they can easily get by firing up their own Xbox 360 or PS3 if they still have it around. And other than that, the game had no real new value to it, and the price tag of $15 was also just too much. While the game had gone on sale for even as little as $2, it felt to players that the game was just something that couldn't be recreated. It was amazing in its own right in its own time, and that's something that couldn't be taken away from it. 
The premise of Castle Clashers simply wouldn't stand in today's era of gaming, where we have movie-style campaigns such as COD and GTA Story Mode and even Red Dead Redemption 2. These are just a few examples of some of the other polished campaigns, and each of these games had even more to do past that. Castle Crashers was solely based on its campaign. I mean, the multiplayer mode was fun, but lacking, especially in today's world. With this in mind, there is still a community of gamers that enjoys Castle Crashers and remembers those Xbox 360 days. And the game is definitely still being played out there somewhere. But realistically, Castle Crashers is one of those games that can't be topped, no matter how hard you try. I'd be interested to see what the community thinks. Comment down below and let me know the last time that you loaded up Castle Crashers. And if it was a long time ago, maybe consider reloading it. Thank you for watching to the end of this controller video.